Hi, and welcome back to another episode. I'm Rob. And I'm Ashley. And this is Life Rewired. Today, we have two special guests joining us. From North Carolina, we have Craig Phillips, who is a motivation, not a motivational speaker, but he is, uh, Craig, introduce yourself. I've lost my link. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. My name is Craig uh, Phillips. I am uh, the creator of Second Chance to Live. Uh, I am a motivational, inspirational speaker. I've spoken around the country in the past three years, 136 times with opportunities coming up uh, here this month, next month, and then June. So uh, per my story, uh, my brain injury happened in 1967 when I was 10 years old. I was in a, uh, we were in a Volkswagen Beetle, got hit by a lady uh, driving a Cadillac. I was beyond my father who was driving and I got um, upon impact. She hit the, where the big bulb is on the left side of the, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle. So what happened is there was no seatbelts in uh, 60, you know, that time it, um, for Volkswagen Beetle. So upon impact, I came up over my dad's back seat. I snapped my left femur and which is a thigh blown and I hit the windshield and I had an open skull fracture. Uh, with right frontal lobe damage, coup contra coup, with a severe brain bruise and brain stem involvement. I remained in a coma for three weeks. And uh, after I came out of that, I uh, found myself being put into a, a full body cast uh, to, after my left leg set, uh, do six or seven weeks in traction. And then I was transferred to a different uh, hospital and I underwent brain and skull surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of hard for me to be succinct. So I'll just try to be as succinct as I can. I essentially had to uh, learn how to walk, talk, read, write, and speak fluent sentences afterwards. And uh, I, I went through a battery of EEGs, uh, two of them, and uh, cognitive and psychosocial testing. And the results were shared with my parents, but not with me. And the, the results showed that I should not, would not probably be able to succeed beyond high school academically. And I went out and I got my undergraduate degree in 10 years. And I got my master's degree in three and a half years. I had a lot of diff disappointments along the way. I, I have a, uh, 28 presentations that I give and one of the presentations is finding purpose after brain injury and stroke and in that presentation I go into depth so if you ever want me to give one of, one or more of my presentations on your um, your uh, podcast I'd be happy to do that but so I, I had a long history of getting loose and jobs I went through two vocational rehab experiences, one in Florida while I was still working as a voc rehab counselor and then terminated as a counselor. And then I was terminated as a client and uh, applied for SSDI twice in Florida, was denied. Uh, found out that North Carolina was rehab friendly. And uh, I sent out my resume and cover letter and I got recruited up to do workers' comp rehab, which essentially with individuals who got injured on the job. And I was a CRC at the time, a certified rehab counselor. So I had the credentials. And once I moved up here, four months later, I got uh, fired by that job, hmm. telling me that they no longer needed my services. So I was back in that familiar place of, even though I tried diligently to, to you know, uh, succeed, and I have a strong work ethic, I just ran into a different wall. And then I went through voc rehab here in North Carolina, and the uh, my voc rehab counselor, after the evaluation process, told me, uh, reported that I was unemployable. So, you know, I spent 10 years, undergrad, three and a half, grad, uh, two graduate schools, and um, so, and now I was unemployable, but I still wanted to use my gifts, talents, and abilities in ways that would work for me. So what I did is I wrote poems, I wrote an autobiography, I wrote a, a book, which I got uh, registered with the Library of Congress, and then I, uh, a friend of mine encouraged me, he said, your information would be right for a blog. So on February 6, 2007, I created Second Chance to Live. Uh, so I've been writing articles, creating video presentations, uh, doing speaking a lot about neuroplasticity. I um, 
I've been training in martial arts disciplines for the past 26 years. My sensei, Sigong Jerusalem instructor, was Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee's philosophy of Jeet Kune Do was to research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add specifically your own creation. So what I've done in, through the martial arts, I've used those principles in my own journey as a as a uh, person living with a brain injury. I don't not like the concept of a brain injury survivor because that allows us or gets us to think that we can't do any, you know, we're limited. So what I like to do, and I refer to myself as an individual impacted by a brain injury. My brain injury is not my identity, you know, and uh, there's too many people in the medical model, you know, in the brain injury industry that wants to keep us in a box and it just keeps us feeling defeated. You know, there's a quote by Robert Frost. He says, never be bullied in silence. Never allow yourself to be made a victim and accept no one's definition of your life. Define uh, of yourself. Define your life. Define your life yourself. And another quote by uh, Albert Einstein. He said, it's not that I'm so smart. It says that I stay with problems longer. So, you know, the thing about it is, is that it's tenacity, persistence, um, you know, just fortitude, courage, not giving up. So, um, so that's basically, uh, in a nutshell, kind of shorter, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, although, uh, I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. I would encourage people to come to my website, secondchancetolive.org. Again, that's secondchancetolive.org. And then you can see, and there are tabs across the top, and you can read as much as you like. Um, uh, but uh, I'm just uh, appreciative to be able to be on your podcast, Rob. So thanks for inviting me, and, and I My look pleasure. forward to being a part of it, where, how this uh, evolved. And it's nice meeting you, Jason, and you too, Ashley. Good That's to me. be with you too. And Thank I'll you. pass with that. Thanks. Okay. Also joining us is Jason Lolly. And he is a TBI survivor, spoken word artist, and a motivational speaker. I ran across him just by accident on Facebook, or not Facebook, on YouTube one day. And in two seconds, I sent him a message like, hey, can I share your content? Because this is really good stuff, because we all need motivation. And so, Jason, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got your brain injury, and, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Well, one, thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to be on here and for the kind words. So thank you. You know, um, to have somebody find me on YouTube and uh, feel that the content is relatable um, is uh, profoundly validating. Um, I started creating content, which is interesting because you, you spoke to me earlier about being a content creation creator, which I guess... In a way, I am, um, because I am putting my content, I'm putting my story out there. And so basically, um, I endured four traumatic brain injuries in um, 16 months in 2018, uh, being on my birthday, January 28th, 2018, drunk, uh, not too drunk, but drunk enough that I turned around, made an athletic move, smashed my face into a countertop bar next to a ski ball machine, broke my nose, split my forehead open. It was like a vibration fork. I was like, zing, right? And then uh, got really angry with everybody, wouldn't let anyone take me to the hospital, typical TBI rage, right? And um, the next one was 20 days later, my wife was, or my ex-wife was driving and um, we got rear-ended and I was in the car. So my brain was vulnerable. Um, and it wasn't until a couple months later that I started to recognize that I had lost joy. I had lost positive emotions and even just, and I was an incredibly energetic and positive human being. In fact, I'm an empath and I went to being apathetic, which was incredibly disorienting, confusing, isolating, and scary, uh, not to mention maddening, right? So... <laughs> made me feel depressed and a lot of anxiety and the rage and anger and irritability that came with that. So the worst one was my third brain injury in September 2000 or September 29th, 2018. Um, I was a valet manager at a private country club for 15 years. Uh, member dropped off his wife to drop to work out. Uh, they drove a Lexus and he went to 
um, go run some errands. Well, if the key leaves the car um, on a Lexus, it beeps. And so she's walking away and I hear the car beep as he's driving away. And I said, do you have the keys to the car? And she goes, oh, stop him. So I bolted at top speed and they had just done a bunch of construction in the parking lot, and put a white nylon clothesline rope up. And I was literally clotheslined at the neck, running full speed, at least 15 miles an hour. Um, whole body kept moving forward. It grabbed me at the jaw, so it yanked. Uh, I was a near internal decapitation. Um, I, it took me three and a half to four years to regain my memories of my death. Um, I did not realize that I had actually gone to the other side in that moment. That was a pretty intense experience when my brainstem woke back up, which is a, also a profound statement in itself. So uh, that's been part of the journey these last couple of years is trying to identify um, the new abilities and thought processes as the brainstem part woke up. Um, and then the fourth brain injury was, I called it the eight month curse. Uh, cause the third one was eight months after the first two. And then the fourth one was eight months after the third one. Um, I, you, I tow or I transport vehicles sometimes for the people at, from that country club. And at the time, uh, my assistant supervisor and I, uh, towed a boat to international falls, Minnesota, 40 hour drive. We slept while the other drove, we got up there. It's about a two mile wide town. It's on the border of Canada. And uh, well, we were the hot chicks. <laughs> so we walked into the bar and immediately got hit on. And uh, we were we both declined it respectfully and politely. Um, they didn't take that very well. We continued to play darts because we were just trying to decompress. And uh, two other girls from Canada walked in and they hit on us immediately too. We drew a boundary, they were respectful and they played darts. At the end of the night, um, one of the, first two girls came up to me and said, uh, all right, well, we're leaving now. Like, do you want to, are you coming with us? And I, I just polite, politely said and respectfully said, you know, it was nice to meet you. Have a wonderful night. She did not take the rejection well. Hmm. So apparently she walked outside and told some guy who was 250 uh, or 5'9", 250 pounds that I sexually assaulted her. So I never saw him the whole night and I'm throwing darts and he taps me on the shoulder and just sucker punched me, took me off my feet, broke my nose, actually dented my forehead. I have a picture of that. Wow. And um, thankfully, I had enough wherewithal that I jumped up immediately and immediately called 911 as I ran to the bathroom because I was just gushing. And thankfully, the cops were driving by and he was arrested. But what I did find out is if it wasn't for the girls from Canada, I would have come home with a sexual assault charge, not have done anything. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a whole other topic, but, um, you know, those are the significant portions of my brain injuries. Um, I've had several hits in my head since, and even during then, um, those are the ones that I just kind of speak about, especially since one of them, that third one was a workman's comp situation, which unfortunately, um, and I will do a lot of speaking on this is. Um, the way that this medical community approaches traumatic brain injury is um, disgusting. And when I reported suicidal ideations um, in March after the March after September, uh, because everything started to fall apart, my marriage was falling apart, like I was barely able to sustain my job. I didn't know uh, what was really happening to me. I was incredibly emotionally volatile, emotionally and verbally abusive um, in my attempts to protect myself when I was so depleted. Um, I had to do a lot of work of compassion around that because it, it traumatized me and my family to behave in ways that I never, um, never approve of for myself, let alone anyone else. And the disassociation was real. And so I had to do a lot of work around that on accountability, on compassion and, and all of that. So, you know, brain injury really, um, it cost me everything. I am currently in this beautiful backyard is my saying, my healing sanctuary. In the last year, I pulled out my 401k, sold my home, divorced my wife, quit my jobs. And I have spent over $100,000 of my life's work. 
I've let go of everything, just surrendered and just said, I need safety. I need a sanctuary to heal. So I've paid my rent for the full year so that I can sit here and, and rest and recover the best that I can so that I can try to figure out financial stability. And as I'm learning through my videos and um, as I'm sharing all the content and having so many wonderful responses to the content and of the experiences and the wisdom I've learned, because I have done over 700 therapies in the last six years. I am grateful to have been one of the few to have access to therapies that many do not, like hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, you know, and so I share a lot of what I've learned because I felt so alone. And um, even though my wife tried to help me, there is a valid perspective of uh, I felt she wasn't, but she was. And there was a major disconnect there. And although she was trying, it didn't mean it was helpful. And so because it wasn't helpful and it was more hurtful that I didn't feel like trying. Right. right. So there was a lot that I've, I've learned through this. And so I'm just grateful. Um, I'm about to step into I'm a mental health first aid trained instructor. So I'm about to step into offering those classes and I'm about to um, step into I've been life coaching people my whole life. So it's just time for me to start doing that. And I'm going to start, uh, I've done a lot of trauma therapy, um, especially internal family systems, IFS. I encourage anyone to look that up. Um, but so I will be doing life coaching on traumatic brain injury and um, uh, trauma, trauma healing and internal family systems. And that's that me and awesome. my man. That's awesome, Jason. Thank you. Yeah. So that kind of leads into our discussion today because um, we do feel alone, especially when you're first on this journey, you feel like there's nobody else out there going through what you're going through. And then those who actually are fortunate enough to join a support group, you go, Hey, wait a minute. I'm not the only guy going through this or growl. Right. And um, so it's, that's the first key in my opinion is to find it a support group. And if one doesn't work for you, cause I've been in some support groups that were not support groups, right. they were very toxic. So if you are in one of those groups, I suggest leave immediately. Um, we did a video. I don't know if either of you've seen the video yet, but we did a video. What Ashley a month ago, do you think? Uh, yeah. Around that. Yeah. Um, it was all about the topics of what not to say to a brain injury survivor. Mm. Now I know that you can't, you're, you're not going to be able to convince everybody in this world what a brain injury is because to me, it's education is important and you don't know what you don't know. Um, and you both know that this is an invisible injury and if you look fine, the, the main assumption is, you are fine. Um, but that's simply not the case. So we're just trying to educate people on how to, how to do better, you know, um, saying things to someone like, Oh, you look great. You, you, you must be great now. Um, Ashley, what, what other things can you think of that people have said? Cause I just lost my train of thought. Um, stuff about like, you know, why we sleep too much or, um, you know, I get headaches too. those types of things like trying to, you know, relate or not understanding why we need so much rest. Right. Neuro fatigue. Yes. It's very real. And people don't, if you don't go through it, you don't know what it is. Right. Plain and simple. Um, it, the video has been viewed. Gosh, I almost close to seven zero zero. 700 times. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I've gotten countless private messages saying, thank you. Um, one person showed it to their spouse who does not have a brain injury. And she said he felt like she was over exaggerating her symptoms. I don't understand why you're tired all the time. You know, 
I don't understand why you always have a headache and you don't want to do anything. After seeing the video, he said, you know what? I have been wrong. I, and, I, and I'm sorry. He, he, he just blatantly told her he's sorry. He said, I, I'm going to do better. So, you know, to the ones that want to be educated, that's what these videos are about. You know, it's like we said, you don't know what you don't know.